All right, my guys, welcome back. Um, I'm going to get started today, guys, with an episode that, hands down by a landslide, this is the number one question I'm getting asked is, John, break down your pricing model step by step. How I charge for dumpster rentals, how I'm charging by the pound, how I'm charging for everything else. So just, I'm going to do a video on it. I'm going to do this kind of podcast style, but we're also going to load this up on YouTube. It'll be available on my Instagram as well. But guys, before we get started, I want to, I want to touch base on a little bit of industry news. Dumpsters in the desert. Uh, Casey, throw up the logo on this and throw up the website for these guys. I'll have Casey throw it up while I'm talking about it. Dumpsters in the desert. This is May 10th. Uh, in Las Vegas. It is the day after Waste Expo. Guys, this is a free event. It's 100% free. There's no charge to it, okay? But we do want you to register. If you would kindly go to the website, register. Please register for every person coming. Um, if you don't register, you're still welcome to come, but the registration helps us really anticipate the expected number of people. This will assist us in parking. This will assist us in our catered food from in and out. This will help us with seating, with our seminars. Just the list goes on and on why we want to try and have as accurate number as possible. As far as the event, this is the networking event that you're not going to want to miss, guys. This is not just about like the cool trucks that are going to be there, the skid steers that are going to be there, the dumpsters. And uh, this is about rubbing shoulders and actually getting to talk with people in the industry that are like-minded. So put it on your calendar. Even if you don't make Waste Expo, do not miss Dumpsters in the Desert free event. All right, let's get started. I'm going to have Casey roll the intro. When we come back, I'm going to take a little drink of water here. When we come back, we're going to talk, and I'm going to unpack this entire pricing model that I have. All right, guys, welcome back. So if if I do my job properly today, this is going to be hands down the most informative educational video I've ever put out on this channel. And, um, and I hope that th that is my goal. I hope to share that information with you so that you guys at the end of this video have a very clear step-by-step -step understanding on how I do my pricing. So if you want to make changes and do it yourself, this is a how-to to do it. Um, but let's get this thing unpacked. Let's get started. All right, guys. For, as many of you know, I charge for dumpsters and then I charge per pound. I also have some other charges in there and we'll kind of go through all that stuff. But guys, there, there, there's two really key ingredients to this that you, you, you're you going to have to commit to if you're interested in running a pricing model like what I'm doing. There's two key points, and I'm going to touch on these first because if you're unwilling or unable to do these two things, this price model will not work for you. Number one, you need to get over this like mentality that our industry has that you don't want to charge after the fact. If you are dead set that you need every ounce of that dumpster paid for up front, this pricing model will not work for you. You have to get over the fact and be able to accept the fact you're going to do some after you pick up dumpster after you pick up the dumpster, you're going to do some billing after the fact. Okay, that's number one. Number two thing that you're going to have to commit to fully is not every customer is your customer. 
I know that sounds simple, but there's still too many of you guys that think you just need to rent a dumpster to anybody that wants to rent a dumpster. This model does not work for every customer. And I'm okay with that because I'm not trying to rent a dumpster to every customer. I'm trying to rent a customer to a certain amount of people that fit in my box. And if they fit in my box, this is a great program. If they don't, this is kind of my way of, of, of kind of just like weeding them out of my system. All right, so let's get going on it. So my pricing model, guys, is, is really simple. Right now, I charge $2.99 for any size dumpster, and I charge $0.09 cents a pound for all waste except concrete, dirt, sod, things of that. I charge $0.04 cents a pound. Okay, guys? The $0.09 cents a pound, it just is a really sweet spot for me in my market. Okay, in my market, nine cents a pound just works really well. I'm going to do the quick math for you guys. Nine cents a pound just doesn't sound like that much money. Nine cents a pound, guys, is $180 a ton. Okay. I prefer to stay there. I've, I've been on this pricing model now for about seven months. It's worked really well for me. I've learned a lot. I feel like I'm the one that uh, obviously came up with this concept. I, I build out this concept. It had some uh, mistakes in it early. I've worked through those. And I'm just at the point now, like with anything else in my channel, like I'm ready to share it because I have a really solid understanding. I know how the customers behave. I know how they think. I know how they're going to pay and different things like that. All right, guys, here's how it works for me. I'm, I rent all my dumpsters for $2.99, okay? It doesn't matter what size dumpster, a concrete dumpster, a 12, a 17, a 22, or a 30. I do this for a lot of reasons, you guys. The $2.99 any size dumpster accomplishes a lot for me. First of all, if I'm sold out on 30s, my terms and conditions say, if I'm sold out on the size that you ordered, you're going to get the next largest size I have available. Now, guys, this really helps me for inventory control. I've heard too many stories. I, I was even talking with someone today and they took a phone call and they're, they're refunding a customer back money because they don't have the size that the customer ordered. Okay. Again, Everything in this video, guys, is how I run it in my market. I'm not saying, I'm not telling you guys how to run your business. What I am doing, though, is I'm sharing with you a model that works extremely well in my market, and I know it works in other markets because I have other guys that I've been on coaching calls with and different things that are also doing it in their markets, and they're doing better than most everyone else in their market, so I know it works. If all my dumpsters are the same price, doesn't matter if it's $199, $299, $600, $1,000, it doesn't really matter. That dollar amount doesn't really matter. I'll come back to that in a minute. What matters is if all my dumpsters are the same price, it allows me, if I'm sold out on 30s, to deliver a 22 to that customer because they paid the same price. And because all my dumpsters are the same price, I explain to them. If I'm sold out on 30s, you'll get my next largest size. That's a 22. Now, guys, I don't just show up with a 22. Okay? I explain this to them in a phone call that I make before I deliver it. But because it's very clear on my website, I really don't get any pushback from any clients on it. I rarely, rarely get any pushback on it because I communicate, I'm really transparent, and all my information is forward-facing. A little side note here, guys. For this model to really work its best, your communication skills and your transparency have to be top shelf. If you're not completely upfront with the customer, this has the, the, the possibility of backfiring greatly on you. All right, so I do $2.99 for all my dumpsters, okay? I'm gonna talk about the $2.99 for a minute, and we're gonna take the nine cents a pound, 
the dumpster and all the charges. We're, we're going to just set it off to the side for a minute, okay? We got a couple different dishes cooking in this pricing model, and I want to keep it as, as simple as possible. Let's talk about the $299. Here's how I came up with the $299, you guys. I asked myself, what do I want to make per hour with my truck? As you guys know, I'm running Peterbilt trucks. I want to make, and guys, when I say make, let's not get cute with all the comments of, oh, you got fuel, you got insurance, you got registration. Guys, I know all the expense. I know what I have. But I'm going to keep it really simple. So when I say I want to make, that's what I'm trying to earn per hour with that truck. I want to make $150 an hour with my Peterbilts. That's what I want to make. My average turn for a rental is two hours. Okay? I'm two hours on my average turn. I have some that are obviously more. I have some that are obviously less. But I've taken all the data from the last three and a half years. My average dumpster is two hours. So if I want to make $150 an hour and it's two hours, that's $300. That's where the $299 comes from on my pricing model. Are you guys all with me? Okay, my $299, I charge up front. That covers my dumpster, the delivery, the pickup, as long as you're in my regular service area. If you're outside my service area, you are going to pay additional money based on the zip code, which is all based on the mileage from where I'm located. This is why it's important you guys have a kick-ass website that can do this, because if you don't have a website that can do this, this is going to get messy really, really quick. And as you guys know, if you don't know, go to my website, www.samedaydumpster.co. And you can look at my website. You can see how I do everything. You can order a dumpster and go all the way to the checkout. Do not check out and then message me and ask me to refund your money. I had four people do that this week alone. Guys, I'm happy to refund your money. Please don't just... Go all the way up to the end until it's like, do you want to rent this dumpster and you've already put all your information in? Just don't do it, guys. Like, I'm chasing my tail, refunding money because people are trying to figure out how my cart works, okay? I don't mind you guys going in there and simulating it all the way up to the rental part. Just please don't pay for it. It's going to save you a headache, me a headache. Like I say, I've refunded four this week alone on guys that went all the way through the process. Check out my website. You can see it. My website allows me to set my prices per mile, per zip code, or anything like that. So I'll charge an additional amount for that. The $299 covers the dumpster, any size dumpster, delivery, pickup, and the first 24 hours. Okay? Remember, I'm a quick hit, quick flip guy. A seven-day rental is what I would consider a long-term rental for me. Seven days is just crazy long, okay? I'm a quick flip guy. I'm a four-hour rental. I'm an eight-hour rental. I'm a half-day. I'm a full day, a two-day, three-day, and you're really starting to, like, push my limits. That's just how I want to run my show. It's how I built my infrastructure for my my business. It's how I'm going to continue to run it. My customers appreciate it. And, you know, I, I've got the logistics to figure out how to make it happen. And it's, it, that's my niche. That's my market. All right. $299 covers the, the dumpster, delivery, pickup in the first 24 hours. Guys, this is going to change the way that you look at your dumpster rentals forever. I promise you. Too many of you guys in the industry are out there trying to make your money on a dumpster rental. And you're not even really thinking about the truck. Okay, you're going to break this into two sections. You're going to break it into what the truck needs to make and what the dumpster needs to make. Remember, we've moved the dumpster off to the side for a minute. So I'm only talking about the truck. It doesn't matter if it's a pickup truck, a hook lift truck, a cable truck, a fucking hand cart. It doesn't matter. A truck is a truck. Okay. 
that two ninety nine for my purposes all go to the truck. Okay, it's paid beforehand. I don't get any of this bullshit where I go out there and I'm like, we agreed that it was four hundred dollars. They say they're going to pay cash. I show up and they got three fifty. Now I got to make a decision. They're playing games with me. They're trying to short me 50 bucks. I drove out here 25 minutes. Do I turn around and go back? Do I leave my dumpster and take a discount? I don't play those games. I did in the beginning. And that's one of the lessons that I learned. It's $2.99. Everyone books online. Zero exceptions. I don't care if they've rented a thousand dumpsters from me. You book online. Everyone books online. So the two ninety nine, dollars that comes in as an order. I get my order shot on it, but that two ninety nine dollars goes to my truck, okay? Now, I'm going to set the truck aside because everyone can understand that. That's money paid up front. I attribute the two ninety nine dollars completely to the truck, to the truck profitability, to the truck expense. Everything goes to the truck. Now, I'm going to bring back in the dumpster, and this is where we're going to spend the majority of the time. Now, I've got a dumpster. It doesn't matter if it's a concrete dumpster, if it's a 12, a 17, a 22, or a 30. It doesn't matter what size. I've got this dumpster. I now set this dumpster on this customer's property, okay? That dumpster has made me zero money. Because all of my two ninety nine dollars I attributed to the truck. Because the truck has to make money. Okay? That dumpster now sits on this customer's property. Job site, contractor, residential, hotel, airport. It doesn't matter what it is. The dumpster is sitting there and has made zero money. So now this dumpster has to make money. Okay, I'm going to use an example of all the ways that this dumpster can make money and I'm going to I'm going to relate it to two two things that we're all familiar with. The first thing I'm going to relate it to is I want you guys to think about going to a sporting event. If you guys go to a Lakers game or you go to a Dodgers game and the Dodgers told you this ticket's going to cost you $1,800 and you're going to sit in the outfield. Nobody would go to the game. Nobody would buy a ticket. That's nuts. But if the Dodger said, this ticket is $79 and you get to sit in the outfield, but when you come into the game, you got to pay for parking. You got to pay for a big finger for your kid. You got to buy him a hat. You got to buy him a jersey. You got to buy a Dodger dog. You got to buy a beer. You got to buy ice cream and a helmet. You got to buy some nachos. You got to pay all this. I'm still going to spend $1,700, but I'm in control of how I get to spend it. Dumpsters are the same way. It's no different. I'll give you a second example. I want you guys to think about a casino, Okay. A casino, when you rent your room, it's very similar to renting a dumpster. You pay $2.99. But now look at all the different ways that a casino makes money on you, okay? They charge you a booking fee. As soon as you get to the there, you have to pay to park. It doesn't matter if you valet park or self-park. You have to pay a resort fee. You pay for your room. You got to pay for all your meals. You got to pay for the show. We haven't even talked about gambling yet. You guys get where I'm going with this? Everybody, guys, it's 2024. Everybody is charging you for all the different things that you want to do, okay? Now, I want to talk specifically to you guys right now that are still offering one ton, two ton, three ton, four ton. It doesn't matter. Do not drop into my DMs and say everyone in my market does it. I don't want to hear it. You know what? They do it in my market too. Every market can handle this pricing model. Every market can handle it because people want the opportunity to control what they put in the dumpster, what it's going to charge, how long they're going to keep it for. Do I want driveway surface protection? Do I want cancellation insurance? You're putting them in control. You guys that are still offering 
20 yard dumpsters, two tons included for seven days, you're going to realize how outdated that pricing model is. Okay. You guys can blow up my DMs and try and get me fired up and everything else like this. But remember, I'm the guy that came up with this and I'm the guy that has figured this out and I'm sharing this with you as a gift. No charge. Just here it is, guys. This is what works for me. And it's not just something that, oh, I hope it works. I've been doing this for seven months. I know it works. I know it works because I got the proof that says it works. All right. For you guys, so we got this dumpster. You got the two comparisons going to a sporting event, going to a casino, and staying at a hotel. Nothing is all included, nothing is, and neither should this industry be because there's too many variables. Now, I want you guys that are including tonnage to look at this dumpster. This dumpster is sitting on the ground, it hasn't made you a dollar. And you're already giving away one ton, two ton. So you are actually in the hole by doing that. You guys need to stop doing that. It is so outdated and it is so just the, the, the modern day customer. The only guys that are asking for how much tonnage is included are the guys that are trying to beat the game. They already know. The other problem with that model, guys, is... You guys, including tonnage, the first thing that someone's going to say in my DMs is, yeah, but look at how much more money I make because I include a 20 ton. So let me back up. I, I have a 20 yard. I include two ton for seven days. That customer calls me in three days and they only put a ton in it. So I made more money. No, you didn't. You just didn't lose as much money. You didn't make more money. You, you just lost half as much because they only put one ton in it, okay? The problem with that pricing model is, guys, your profitability is 100% dependent on the customer loading light. That is a terrible business model. Let me repeat this again because some of you guys aren't going to catch this or you, you're just playing this in the background, you're driving. I'm going to say this again. This is probably one of the most important parts of this entire podcast. You guys that include tonnage and when you pick a light dumpster, you're like, look, I made more money because I built two tons into it and they only put a ton in, so I made more money. That business model is 100% dependent on your customer loading light for you to be more profitable. The lighter they load it, the more profitable you become. That is the, the worst, the, the absolute worst pricing model ever in any industry. It's insane that you guys have convinced yourself that's a good way to do it. It's not. The, the modern day buyer wants you to be transparent with them and they want to pay for what they use. Okay. They want to, they want to pay for what they use. I only charge my customers for what they put in the dumpster and the exact amount of time they keep the dumpster. Okay. So let's talk about all the different charges, all the different ways that I can make money with that dumpster sitting on the ground making zero money. Okay. I'm very similar to a sports team and I'm very similar to a casino on how I do it. It starts off with cancellation insurance. Then I offer driveway surface protection. Then I offer fire and damage insurance on it. Okay. Those are the three that they can select at the time of booking. Okay. Now I, so those are three ways I can make money with this dumpster sitting on the ground. Then once the dumpster gets set on the ground, I still have my specialty item list. A lot of you guys have bought those, uh, rat cards from me. A lot of guys have purchased them. Thank you. I appreciate the support that rate card. I call it a rat card. It's a rate card. It's a specialty item card. I know lots of guys in the industry are using them now. Uh, I think you're very wise. If you guys want to see what I'm using, go to www.stayloaded.com. 
That is my professional page where I sell all my contracts. I sell all the digital downloads, uh, all my coaching, all my stuff is on that page. You can actually buy that template. I believe it's about $69. You can download it. You can change the colors. You can put your logo in. You can change the pricing. It, it, it's a template that you can go in and you can edit and change, print it off yourself, start using it and giving it to your customers. The specialty items on that are very important to this process, you guys. You guys that are still just letting these guys throw whatever they want in because your landfill's not charging you, that's cool. That's great. But you're missing a real opportunity. You're missing an opportunity to increase your profitability and make more money. Like, how many guys are going to throw a water heater in the back of their Tesla and take it to the landfill? The bigger... The more awkward the item and the less likely the customer is to try and tackle that by themselves, that's what's going to find itself on my, on my rate card, okay? The really off-the-wall specialty items, obviously there's things in there like paint and mattresses and tires and chemicals and e-waste and all sorts of stuff. I give the customer the choice if they want to put it in the dumpster or not. I don't care if you put it in. You can take it to the landfill yourself, put it in the back of your Tesla, and drive out there. That's not my concern. But if you put it in this dumpster, this is what you're going to get charged for it. And I do that for a couple of reasons, guys. These guys need just a little bit of education. And I know that every market is different, but my market just doesn't allow you to put whatever the hell you want in a dumpster and go buried in the West Desert anymore. Those days are long gone in Salt Lake. We recycle. We're pretty progressive. There's a lot of rules. There's different things like that. And if they're going to rent a dumpster from me, this isn't me just like turning a blind eye and just put whatever the fuck you want in this dumpster. I'm not that guy. If you're looking for that, I can refer you to four or five guys in my market that are happy to do that. Guys that don't know their numbers, guys that don't know their value, guys that don't understand the business, guys that are just out there banging cans, thinking that they're making money, but really have no idea what they're doing. How do I know they don't know what they're doing? Their trucks are broke down. Their dumpsters look like shit. Their drivers just aren't professional. They don't look professional. Um, it just, those are the guys that can have all the work. Remember at the beginning of this, I started out by saying you have to make the, the, the mental commitment to yourself. You're not trying to rent a dumpster to everybody in your market. Okay. I don't want those customers. Those customers are problems. Those customers don't play by the rules. Those customers don't listen. Those customers are just going to give you a major headache. And those are the kind of customers that make you want to just like leave the industry. Let other companies have those guys. Okay? Just let them have them. That's not what this podcast is about. They're not going to help you accomplish your goals. They're not going to help you scale. They're just there to take advantage of you until you cut them off. And then they're just going to go on to the next guys. Learn how to identify them really quick. They're red flags all over them and just move along. All right. So the specialty items is also another way that I can make money. Okay. So now I got cancellation insurance. I got driveway surface protection. By the way, it's rolly skates. If you guys aren't using rolly skates, you're missing a huge opportunity. I'm not going to go off on a, on the rails on this, but guys, you can throw down wood and yeah, it's going to do the same thing. I don't want to charge somebody $39 for driveway surface protection and put down wood. I think it's chicken shit. I think it's bullshit. I think you're, if somebody charged me $39 and they threw down some wood that they bought at Home Depot, I'd feel like I absolutely got scammed. And you're probably going to give yourself some back end problems because now you've started this rental relationship where the person renting the dumpster feels like they got boondoggled by you because, oh, for 39 bucks you throw down wood? Now, for me, I charge them 39 bucks. I throw down rolly skates, okay? Those rolly skates are something they've never seen before. It's true driveway surface protection. It's not wood, anything else like that. This podcast is not about what's right, what's wrong. I'm just telling you how I do it in my market. I'm not going to charge someone money and 
pull up with wood and call it driveway surface protection and try and smile and make them feel good about it when they know they got screwed over and got played. And I know that I played them, if that makes any sense. So I, I use driveway or I use rolly skates for my driveway surface protection. I got fire and damage. I got my specialty items. Okay. Let's keep unpacking this. That's what five or six ways I make money. The next way I make money is I have a premium booking. Premium booking for me is it, it's kind of like anything else. If you want to select a time, an exact time, you're going to pay for that with me. Otherwise, you're going to get my soonest available. My soonest available might be in an hour. It might be in four hours. And it might be in three days. Okay. But by you not wanting to pay my premium booking, my premium booking changes. Okay. It starts at $49. Weekdays, it's $49. On the weekends, I flip it up to $99 because nobody else is working. I'm working. And if I'm going to step away from my family, step away from church, step away from family dinner, someone's going to pay me $99 in addition to it. Okay. Uh, the week that I had Julian here, he and I talked about it. And he was just like, man, I can't believe all these guys are paying $299 plus delivery charge, plus premium booking. I think we did five or six that day uh, from three o'clock on on Sunday. And every single one of them paid that $99 premium booking. So that's another way that I, that I can make money. So I got my premium booking. The other thing I have is my distance to them. I have my core service area. My core service area, the 299 is included. Once you start getting outside my core service area, I start charging more based on the mileage. This is all built into my website. I'm not trying to figure this out on every customer. It's automatically built into my website based on their address. Again, guys, so why you got to have a kick-ass website? The guys at Hypertech are better than anybody in the industry. They've got it figured out. We built it. We figured it out. It works like a champ. The technology is out there. It's on you if you don't want to use it. It's on you if you want to make excuses why you can't afford it. That's on you. But the tool is out there and the technology is now out there to do this. So I charge these guys based on distance as well, okay? So now I've got eight or nine ways this dumpster can now make money. So... We're going to kind of recap, reset a little bit, and we're going to get deeper into the tonnage charge. The $299 when they book is what they pay if they're in my service area. That's $299 plus $49 if they want to choose a delivery time of 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. or 2 p.m. If they choose a time, I charge them $49 unless it's on Sunday. On Sunday, they pay $99 in addition to that. That money all goes to the truck. Everything that is paid up front goes to my truck. So if they took driveway surface protection, if they took cancellation insurance, if they take delivery charge, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> all right. So my girl, you don't have to cut this out, Casey. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm snickering right now. I'm laughing because my girl, Rachel, um, recently brought her cat to my house. I'm not a cat guy. I'm a dog guy. And now I got this cat and this cat's meaner than a fucking devil. It's the meanest thing in the city on four legs and I can't approach it. And I told Casey when he came over to film this today, I said, be careful of that cat. And just now when I was doing it, Casey reached his hand out and that fucking cat just took a big old bite out of Casey's hand. All right, back to the program. So maybe we'll show a picture of the cat when this whole thing is done. Do not be fooled. I'm not a cat guy. This thing's meaner than hell. But anyway, there you go. All right. So anything that is booked online 
and paid for before the truck is dispatched gets credited to the truck. This is how I do it. Okay, so the minimum it would be is $299. The most it can be can be $299 plus a delivery fee, plus cancellation, plus rolly skates, plus fire protection, throw in a Sunday on it, an extended area. It might be five, six, seven hundred bucks before they even see the dumpster. That all goes to the truck. Now I got the dumpster sitting there, guys. This is where I'm going to really kind of get into a little bit more of the psychology of how they buy and how it works so well for me. This dumpster is sitting on the ground. It's made no money, okay? I've already determined that giving away one or two ton for free is just, it, it, it's so outdated. I mean, just ask yourself this. Who gets, what landfill are you guys going to or what transfer station are you going to that's giving you one or two ton for free? I don't know of a single one that says, oh, you got a 20 yard, you can dump the first two ton for free. But yet, that's what you guys are doing to your customers. And the only reason you guys are still doing it, you're, you're using the excuse everyone in your market does it. But the only reason you're truly still doing it, you don't have the website, you're unwilling to try and disrupt your market. Three, you're just, you, you, you don't want to stand out. You want to run in the pack with everybody else. Let me tell you this, guys. Running in the middle of the pack is not going to get you anywhere. Over time, it's just, you're just, you're trading dollars. You think you're making money, you're trading dollars. You're, you're not, you're not really doing anything. To really do anything, you have to stand out. You have to be exceptional. And it's not just with your equipment, with your name, with your service or anything else. You have to stand out and you got to be bold and willing to do something that no one else in your market is willing to do. And that's, I'm that, I'm that guy in my market. Okay, I'm the guy that will break the rules. I'm the guy that will like disrupt and I'm the guy that'll figure out and I'll play with stuff and not everything hits guys. I'm the first to admit it. Not everything hits. But when I share it on this channel, I've already done it. It hits. It works. Okay. The dumpster sits on the ground and it's made no money. I don't include any tonnage. When a customer calls and says, how many tons do you include? This is my response. I'm not aware of anywhere in Salt Lake that lets me dump for free. So yes, we do require our clients to pay to get rid of their own trash. It's a very simple sentence and clients understand it. And they kind of like take a step back and like, okay, yeah, that was kind of a silly question. Like, I'm not giving you two tons for free because nowhere in Salt Lake City will dump my first two tons for free and it's your trash. I'm not paying to get rid of your trash. You're going to pay to get rid of your own trash. So the dumpster sits and it makes no money yet. So now I have to make money. I got to make money on tonnage and I got to make money on extra days and I got to make money on... Um, my specialty items. So let's talk about the extra days for a minute. I include I include the first 24 hours with all my rentals. After that, I charge $50 a day. I know some of you guys charge $3 a day, $2 a day, $7 a day. Here's the really easy way to figure out what you want to charge a day. How much would you rent that dumpster for out for a month and not make any money on just on your daily charge? You guys charge in $7 a day, really simple, 7 times 30, $210. I'm not willing to set my dumpster anywhere for $210 a month. That's a hard fucking no for me. Hard pass. I'm not doing that. Seven dollars a day, you're 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 not putting any urgency on that dumpster. For me, for my market, 50 is a sweet spot. 50 is a good price. 50 is the number that the customer is aware that they have a dumpster sitting there, but 50 isn't a deal killer that they're like, oh man, it's fifty dollars a day. I gotta hurry and get this done. This is how I explain it to a customer when I drop it off. 
after I go through the dumpster, I kind of, I've, I have a very set routine I go through. I say, do you have any questions about the rental period and how it works? They usually repeat back to me. No, I think we get it for the first day and then it's $50 a day. I'm like, yeah, they're well informed. They know the reason I do the $50 a day and I do it like this guys is this is the only pricing model that you can literally let the customer choose how long they want it. My customers can rent it for a day, two day, three day, four, five. They can rent it for as long as they want. And this is how I explain it to them. I explain it to them like this. I said, look, your dumpster, the price you paid includes it until, let's just say it's nine o'clock. I dropped it at nine o'clock in the morning. This rental is included until nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay, if you need it longer, don't call me. Don't text me. You don't need to. I'm not going to pull this dumpster. You're not going to go to the grocery store or run to Home Depot or you got called into work and you're going to come back and your dumpster got pulled. This is what happens when people do three day and seven day rentals and put it on their calendar to pull it. You got you guys pull it. You take a picture on the inside. Look, they only filled that half full. Ha ha ha. Like, look at all this money I made. What the, the post you don't see is the customer calling back and screaming. I, I wasn't done with that dumpster. You pulled the dumpster when I was gone to the store. I wasn't done with it. And some of you guys can be like, yeah, but the agreement was three days. That's not how I want to run my business. Look, you get the dumpster for the first 24 hours, then it's $50 a day. You don't need to call me. You don't need to text me. Just keep it here. Okay, this dumpster, you have my word, this dumpster will not leave until you call me and tell me it's ready to go. Now, customers like that because the, the, the fear of like not getting it done in time goes out the window. And I explain it to them like this. Look, you might think you're going to get done in two days, but the weather turns cold or it snows or it rains or you get a better offer to go to a concert tonight or go to a jazz game. No big deal. It really isn't. It's just $50 for the next day. Okay. They appreciate that because now they get to customize this rental specifically for them for how long they want to keep it. No one else is doing this. You guys are either doing one day rentals or three days or seven days or 14 day or three week or 11 days. It doesn't matter. Every one of my rentals is customizable by the customer for the customer's needs. They are in full control. That is the psychology that the modern client wants. They want full control of the deal and I'm giving it to them. Keep it for a day, great. Keep it for four days, cool. Don't text me. Only call me when it's ready to pick up. If I pick it up three days later, they pay for two. If I pick it up five days later, they pay for four. If I pick it up in 24 hours, they don't pay anything additional on the day ends. Okay? Find that sweet spot that works for you guys, but you guys charging $3, $5, $7. You just don't know your value. You don't know your value, and that's where problems with clients come in because clients respect businesses that know their worth. Clients want to do business with people that actually know what they're doing. And I, I feel like a lot of people in this industry, I'm going to say this again. I caught so much heat for this on Instagram, but I'm going to say it again here today. If you're not renting dumpsters right now in April in just about anywhere in the country, you're too cheap. I know that sounds backwards. You're too cheap. And your clients don't trust that you can actually deliver. That's the truth. Okay. You, you have a credibility problem with your clients. In my market, it's $50 a day. I watch these new guys come into my market. There's someone new that just came into my market. They're the same price as me. They're $2.99. They're offering the same time dumpsters. They're offering two free ton. You don't pay extra for mattresses. You don't pay extra for anything. They haven't been in my market for 30 days. And yesterday, their website's now updated. Now they're charging for mattresses. Now they're charging for extra days. Now they're charging for tonnage. You know why? 
because they they didn't they don't know what it costs to do business, and now all of a sudden they realize like this is a terrible pricing model, giving guys two tons for free and not charging for anything. We're leaving money on the table and we can't make money. It's only a matter of time until people figure that out. For you guys watching that are second, third, and fourth generation, I already know you're like, well, we rent 40 yards, we include four ton, we've done it for 50 years, and we're the biggest in the city. Great. Go out and try and start another business today. Go start another business under a new name today and try and do it the same way that you've been doing it for 40 years, and I guarantee you it won't work. It only works because you're the 800-pound gorilla in that market. But if you're a new guy starting out, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot make money and make it work doing it the way that our forefathers or your grandfather or your three generations ago set it up. So don't even, don't even start in with me on that stuff. That's not what this is about. This is about people that are trying to figure out how to be more profitable, how to deliver better service. And how to figure out a better pricing that their customers actually want to go with. Look, how I sell against you guys that are like, look, I got a 20 yard for two ton. I'm easy. I always ask the question, how much do they give you back if you don't fill up the full 4,000 pounds? Well, I don't think they give anything back. You're right. They don't. With me, you're only going to pay what you put for what you put in the dumpster. You pay per pound you put it in the dumpster i'm going to send you a bill for it all right so now we get down to the tonnage the customer calls me we've talked about all these different ways i make money when i get to the customer's house i take several pictures i usually take about 10 pictures at the house mailbox address markings in the car uh, and then i take pictures of the dumpster what's inside the dumpster i always find one thing in the dumpster that's super markable what i mean by that is a pink plastic swim pool i make sure that's in my photo um, a green golf cart like i make sure that's in my photo whatever it is so that when i go to the transfer station and i empty it out that same markable item is in all the photos so there's no question that that was their load okay guys I'll do another podcast on my billing, on my uh, photos, and how I do all that stuff. It, it's it's probably just as long of a podcast as this, and I want to make sure I stay focused on this. So I pick the dumpster up. I take it to the transfer station. I weigh it. At the end, I end up with a scale ticket that shows them what their actual weight is. Now, I bill them for that at nine cents a pound, okay? For me, you know, that's $180. $180. Guys are always asking me what I pay. I pay $36.64 a ton. Before you guys start saying, holy shit, that's cheap, blah, 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 just remember, everyone in my market pays the same. So it doesn't matter if I pay $5 a ton or if I pay $500 a ton or I pay $2,000 a ton. Everyone in my market pays the same, so I have no advantage over anybody else. So for you guys in Hawaii that are like, man, it's a five-ton minimum. Yeah, you're right, and you live in paradise, and that's just the rules. Okay, I don't have an edge on anybody based on my tonnage price. I don't. I pay what the street pays. I pay $36.64. But I use my tonnage as a profit center, guys. You guys that are passing on tonnage, if I pay $36.64 and I'm passing on additional tonnage at $36.64, you're nuts. You need to treat your tonnage as a profit center. I make 411% on my tonnage. I pay $36.64, I charge $180. It has to be its own profit center, just like your truck, just like your dumpster, just like everything else. You, you guys need to learn to be more like a casino and more like a sporting event. And you got to learn in all the areas that you can make money. You guys, this is the second probably most key takeaway of this podcast. Quit passing ton of John for your costs. You can't. You can't stay and remain in business for doing things at cost. 
I take phone calls almost weekly of somebody wanting a discount and I don't offer discounts. And they're like, well, the last company offered a discount. And I said, then why aren't you calling them? Nine out of 10 times, you know what they say? Because they're no longer in business. Well, no shit. They're discounting their way out. And usually someone that will ask you for a discount, that's not my customer. Don't be afraid to just be like, hey, I think you got the wrong number. That's not how we do business. Thanks for calling. I have no problem with it. I don't walk into restaurants and ask for discounts. I don't walk into car lots and ask for discounts. I don't walk into my friend's tire shop and ask for a discount. I don't ask for a discount from anybody. Everybody needs to make money. I want everyone to make money. And I only run in a circle of people that pay each other what their asking price is. I don't want to do business with people that offer discounts. I don't want to do business with people that ask for discounts. Just not how I run my show. You pay me my asking price. I'll pay you your asking price. We'll support each other and everyone's happy. The, the discounts are bullshit. They really are, guys. Now, that's not saying I don't give them when a problem comes up. So let's go into this next part. So I bill the customer for the tonnage. So the customer rented the dumpster for $299. And then after the fact, I send him an invoice for additional days, tonnage, and specialty items. Those are the three things that he's going to get on his post pickup invoice. Tonnage, additional days, and specialty items. That is how the dumpster itself makes its money. The truck gets everything that was paid for online. Everything after the fact goes to the dumpster. If you guys start looking at this differently, you're going to realize, holy shit, I've never even looked at it like that because you guys are just trying to make money on the dumpster and you're just trying to do it like everyone else does it. You don't know their expense. You don't know anything about their business. This is why the advice of call your competition and see what they're charging is the worst advice. Anyone that gives you that advice is probably not making money in this industry. They don't know how to create value on them, their, their selves. And I promise you, no one is running a channel on YouTube or anyone else that's given advice that says, call your competition. That's the best advice you can get. If that's the best advice you can give, sit down, go sit back on the porch, let the adults play in this game because you have no place in this marketplace to be handing out advice. Call your competition. It's terrible advice. All right. So now I've run that dumpster. Okay. So this does a couple of things, guys. I want, I, I, want you to th I want you to think about this in a couple of different ways. If I rent a dumpster for $500 and it's a 20-yard and I include two tons, let's just bring in the scenario that now I've got a problem with the customer for whatever reason. I'm going to use a common issue that I hear on occasion, okay? A customer will call me and be like, man, you charged me for six additional days. We didn't even work on the weekend. Like, and I have to pay days on the weekend. I'm like, yeah, the dumpster sat there on the weekends. Well, we didn't even work. This is a, this is a hot point for the customer. Okay. He's upset about paying additional days on the weekend. If I rent him a 20 yard for $500 and I give him two ton, I only have one way to make this customer happy after the fact. I have to discount my price. Every dollar I discount, I'm giving away profit. But it's the only way to keep him happy. So maybe I started at $500, and now I'm down to $400 because I pulled $100 off. He's probably still not super stoked, but it's the only thing I can do is keep pulling prices off that price. That is the only lever I can pull to keep him happy. Now look at how I do it. If the customer calls and says, hey, I'm upset about the weekend charge like this and that. All I have to do is I'm like, okay, I'll tell you what, bud. I didn't realize you guys didn't work weekends. I'll tell you what. I'm going to take off the weekends. And in fact, every dumpster that you rent from me going forward, I'm never going to charge you weekends because now I don't, I know you don't work weekends. 
Okay, yeah, that's great. So I pull a hundred dollars off because I pull two days off and I charge fifty dollars a day. He's happy. I've given him a commitment to not do it again in the future, but I still made money on tonnage, delivery, specialty items. I still made money on cancellation. I made money all this way. Guys, I want, I'm going to use one more illustration on this because I have so many levers to pull and buttons to push to keep a customer happy because I have a dozen ways I'm making money. Think about this. The last time you went in and bought a car, why do dealers always say, how much do you want it for per month? Now, I know some of you guys are like, I pay cash. Okay, great. This isn't for you. Sit down. The reason dealers do that is the dealer has so many resources. They have the car. They have the price of the car. They have rebates. They have first-time buyer. They have high-qualified buyer. They have extended warranties. They have paint protection. They have oil changes. They have financing. They have so many levers that they can pull. They can usually get you to the price you want, and they still made money. You don't care because you got the payment that you want, but they have all these resources that they can pull from, borrow from here, move this here, do that there. I'm doing the same thing in dumpsters. But if you're just offering flat rate pricing, you don't have that ability. The only ability you have is I have to discount the price of my dumpster. And by discounting, you're pulling profit out. Under my model, Okay, it's this that he's upset about. It's this that he's upset about. Here's another thing that I do on a pretty regular basis for regular customers. For you guys that are renting for guys, I call it my six-star program. So it's my six-star customer, okay? My gate rate, my street rate, my website rate is nine cents a pound. A lot of times, if the customer, if I feel like there's going to be an issue or I just want to say thank you, on the invoice, I'll just put like, hey, six-star customer, I'm going to discount this rate down to seven cents a pound for you. Okay? When was the last time anybody opened up an invoice and someone just gave you a discount without asking? It doesn't happen. People don't do that. These customers recognize it. Okay? My cost... My cost is two cents a pound. Two cents a pound is my cost. So I can offer nine cents, eight cents, seven cents, six cents, five cents, four cents. I'm still making 100%. If four cents a pound, I'm still making 100% profit. I can walk that down for any customer I want. I can say thank you to a customer in so many different ways. You guys on flat rate pricing, offering one ton, two ton, three ton, you're not even in the same ballpark as me. You do not have any tools. The only thing you can do is discount down your dumpster, which takes profit off your bottom line. I can discount from nine cents down to seven cents. I can take days off. I can get away with specialty items. I can add them extra days. I have so many things at my disposal, which is why I can remain profitable even with the most difficult client. Guys, I want you to really think about this. Okay. I don't care if you're buying something on Amazon. All right. Free shipping or get it sooner and pay this. It doesn't matter what you're buying online. It doesn't matter what you're paying for. There's good, there's better, there's best, there's top shelf. But you guys aren't doing this in dumpsters. You guys are continually following the pack, trying to do it the way they've been doing it for 60 years. And you're including one ton, two ton, three ton. And then you guys get on Facebook and you're all pissed off and fired up because you can't figure out how to get more leads and how to get more customers. All right, I'm almost done with this one, guys. It's been a long one, but there's a lot of good information in this. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up, and th this is one thing that I want you guys to think about. I want you to think about how much money you made last year. I'm not talking about bottom line. I'm talking about top line. I don't care what your bottom line is. That's not what this podcast is about. Your top line. Did you make 50 grand? 
Did you do a hundred grand? Did you do five hundred grand? Did you do a million? It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the example of of five hundred thousand dollars. If you made five hundred thousand dollars last year, and you follow this model, you should be able to make a million dollars this year without without doing any more rentals the same amount of dumpster rentals because think about it guys we've all heard this it's easier to sell more to an existing customer than it is to get a new customer okay if you can take a customer that normally rent somewhere in the three or four hundred dollar range and you can turn them into a six or eight hundred dollar customer and giving them the full power of that that's what this is all about if i can double the amount of money that i make if i make 299 on the front side okay remember a one ton dumpster is worth 180 dollars to me if i get a two ton dumpster no specialty items no extra days that's $360 to me. That means I made $299 on the front, $360 on the back. I made more on the back end on a two on a two ton dumpster than I did on the front end. Think about this. I don't have to do any more rentals. I don't burn any more fuel. I don't have to buy additional trucks. My landfill fees aren't more just my labor isn't more. You can literally double how much money you're making by changing how you're pricing and giving all the control to the customer instead of giving it away and trying to do flat rate pricing. So if I did $500,000 under one particular business model where I include tonnage, in my model, I'm making, in most cases, my secondary billing on the back end is more than the 299 on the front end. I'm not spending any more in fuel. I'm not doing any more rentals. I'm not, my insurance doesn't cost more. Truck payments don't cost more. Dumpsters don't cost more. Nothing costs more, nothing. I'm just learning how to get my same customers to pay me twice as much. And they're happier because they're in full control. Okay, that's the way to do it, guys. It really is. That's the way that I do it. I know you guys want to load up my DMs and tell me how you've done it, how your grandfathers did it, how your pioneers did it, how Brigham Young did it. Like, I really don't care. It's 2024. I can make the argument there's things that you're doing right now that worked in 2023 that don't work in 2024. Shit that worked in 2019 that do, that doesn't work now. And guys, I'm going to touch on one last thing. I'm going to touch on this credit card on file. I'm going to bill them. I do not store credit cards on file. Let me repeat this again for the guys in the back, just kind of listening to this in the background and your ears just perked up. I do not store credit cards. Okay, the reason I don't store credit cards is I still believe 99% of the people in my market are good people. They, they know what they agreed to. They're going to pay their bill. They're going to pay it quickly. Okay. I send them their invoice. Okay, I send it to them. I tell them when I pick up the dumpster, though. I'm going to be sending you an invoice as soon as I as soon as I weigh this. I'm going to send it to you for your two extra days, your specialty items. Do me a favor. Pay that as soon as you get it. That's what helps me support my family. That's what helps me give the great service that I gave to you today. Pay it promptly. And they'll usually nod their head and be like, yeah, I get it. I send them an invoice. Nine out of ten people will pay that invoice as soon as it hits their inbox. I don't like to chase it more than anyone else. Having a credit card on file, I don't want to do business that way because I don't want to start charging people's credit cards. I want to give them, let them keep the power that my whole business model is built around. Remember, my whole business model is about empowering the customer. 
It's not about empowering me. It's about giving all the power to the customer and let the customer choose what they want to pay for, how long they want to keep the dumpster, what they want to put in it, if they want driveway protection, all that. It's all power to my customers. And I want to continue that through the billing process. I want to give the power to them to freely go in and put their credit card in and do that. That's why I don't store credit cards. I don't want to just like, oh, I hit their credit card. I know a lot of you guys want to do that and stuff like that. That's cool. That's not how I run my show. This is built on trust and communication. It's worked very, very well for me. For you guys that saw my video at the end of last year where I showed actual numbers and I showed you my actual books, I did $783,000 last year and I got burned on 900 bucks. It just is what it is. It's the cost of doing business. I'm on track this year to do 1.1. I would imagine if I can stay under $2,500 in write-offs or in losses or not paid invoices, I'll be pretty happy. So we're a third way in and yeah, I'm already down about 300 bucks. And for you guys that want to know, it was a fucking roofer. It was. Uh, that's another story for another day, though, because I don't do roofers, but I broke my rule of the first week of January for a 54 year old roofing company here in Salt Lake City. I thought there was no way they were going to screw me over. I ran six or seven dumpsters for them, and then they fucked me over on the last invoice. So it it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, you're not going to see any roofers out of me anytime soon. I tried, guys. I tried my best. I just me and roofers just it's not my jam so guys one last little pro tip i'm going to give you and then i'm going to close this out i told you guys this was a long one here's the last little pro tip if you have a contractor and you're doing this pricing model with a contractor it's not uncommon for me to go in there and on the invoice that i send to them i'll pull a 25 percent discount if it's paid within 48 hours and my verbiage says that if paid here, you can take this 25% discount in the next 48 hours. If it's not paid, that discount will be removed. 99 out of hundred contractors will pay that in 48 hours because they know nobody gives them a discount. They already know that they owe it. And if I can get a 25% discount and not have to wait 30 days, that's how I get contractors to pay their bills fast. And on my pricing model, I have so much profit built in in so many areas, I can afford to give away 25% to get a con to get a contractor to pay me quick. So little pro tip there for you guys um, that would work. But guys, I hope this is useful. There is a lot more to it. This was this is kind of the quick version, but I don't think many people are going to listen to a four hour podcast as I break this thing down step by step by step by step. If you got any questions, drop the comments. Guys, I want to reiterate this. I am doing this as a service to the dumpster community. I'm sharing my knowledge to you guys for free. This channel isn't blocked, it isn't hidden behind a subscription. It's not a paywall. Keep your comments positive. I'm a positive guy. I'm trying to lead this industry with positivity. I don't want your hate. I don't want your bullshit. I don't want your examples of how your grandfather did it for 50 years. Go find another channel and drop that shit on. Better yet, why don't you make a video and tell us how you did it that way rather than finding yourself on my page, leaving hate. Most of the guys that leave hate on my page, I don't respond. If you don't get a response from me, it's probably because your comment wasn't useful, it wasn't positive, and it doesn't make the community a better place. So if I fail to, if I fail to comment on your comment or respond back to you, reread your comment. If it's, if it's not helpful and it's not positive and it's not going to help people in this industry grow, I'm not going to respond to you and it's probably a pretty clear sign that your comment wasn't taken very nicely on my end but guys i appreciate you all 
I hope this is useful to you. Drop a comment below if you need more clarity or you want to give an example of how this has helped you. Anything that helps lift up everyone in our industry so we can all learn together. Those comments are welcome. Everything else, just keep them to yourself. But guys, I appreciate it. I want to thank Casey. Casey's been kicking ass. Uh, his content is off the hook. He and I sat down at the first year and said the content has to get better. Uh, the things we talk about has to be more valuable. Again, guys, there's nothing entertaining about my channel. This is an education-based channel, okay? That's it. I'm not trying to be entertaining. I'm trying to be educational. I'm trying to share my ideas, share things that work. There are so many of you guys and all your messages that you send me of encouragement and thankfulness, and I appreciate you guys. I really appreciate you guys that send me those messages. Uh, you're positive, you're lifting. Uh, that's just more of what we need. But anyway, guys, stay loaded. Don't forget, Dumpsters in the Desert, November 10th, Las Vegas. I hope to see all of you guys there. You're crazy if you miss the event. It's a free event. You're just, I, I can't even imagine an excuse why you could miss it. Don't miss it. Be there. But everybody else, drive safe. Drop your comments. I'll try and respond to as many as we can. Hope it was useful. Good luck, guys. Go build those empires. Nine cents at a pound. Nine cents a pound at a time. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.